All right, so thank you everyone. My name is Jason Belancic from Day On. I am head of solutions engineering uh, for the Americas. So that covers pre-sales engineering as well as solution architecture. Um, I've been with the company about nine years. Um, in that time, we've, we've been, I think, a FIDO member for almost the entirety of that. Um, so I'm, I'm excited and pleased to be able to present um, with, with this FIDO presentation. Um, so what I'm going to be talking to you about today is what we like to call FIDO Plus. Um, and, and really what, what we mean by that is FIDO authentication, of course, but, but how do we marry that with some of the other capabilities that we provide uh, at Dayon in the identity ecosystem? So uh, specifically, we're really going to be talking about identity proofing and identity recovery. So just a quick little bit about Dayon. We've been in, in the identity space for more than 20 years now. Um, so we, in fact, predate FIDO. Um, but, but of course, we've been a member of FIDO since almost the beginning. Um, so we're, we're a very big uh, proponent of FIDO. And, and of course, we share the same um, core kind of component and, and core uh, you know, idea of let's do what we can to, to rid the world of passwords. Um, so we have companies, of course, around the globe, iconic brands that, that all of us use and know on a daily basis, um, covering really all of the, all of the continents. Um, thousands of customers, billions of identities in our system, um, and really more than a hundred, couple hundred million uh, daily authentication transactions. Um, every single day. So just to kind of give you a little bit of a, a breadth of the scale of, um, of what, we, what we process here at Dayon. Um, we're also very proud of a, a lot of the, the core biometric and, and other patents that we've developed over the years. Um, since our inception more than 20 years ago, we've really been a, a key player in the biometric industry, even before it was really mainstream with things like smartphones. Um, so we have several uh, patents and uh, we've evaluated more than 100 biometric algorithms over the years. So what we're really trying to do at Dayon um, is we see ourselves really as an identity company, really. So authentication is one part of that, of course. Um, but, but really, we're trying to, trying to really bring the, the entire identity uh, ecosystem to our customers and, and really enable our customers to cover everything from identity establishment um, to, of course, um, you know, authentication and be able to assert your identity across whatever channel you might be operating on. Um, and, and even in some cases, when something happens, we need to be able to recover that identity as well. Um, so we're really focused on that entire identity ecosystem and really bringing our customers the capabilities um, to offer the, the strong authentication and other identity um, capabilities to their customers. So authentication, of course, is a very core part of that. Um, but what we found in the market is that authentication is really just one part of, of what they really need for, for solutions. Um, there are, of course, cases where someone maybe loses a phone. Um, while FIDO is great, and, and as I you know, mentioned already, we're, we're a very big proponent of the FIDO uh, message, right? But there are some cases where, where that leaves some, some areas where a, a user might struggle. Um, so an example of that, like I mentioned, is someone loses their device, or what if uh, we need to register multiple devices? There's a lot of ways that, that both Dayon and other companies have, have sought to kind of solve this um, or, or at least solve for it by, you know, offering different abilities. So maybe in addition to, you know, FIDO authenticators on a mobile device, you can also have some, you know, hardware keys in some cases. So that solves for at least some customers. I read a pretty good article just the other day um, about kind of a, a new, um, a new, algorithm, not an algorithm, more a, a new um, proposal, I guess, a new proposed methodology with WebAuthn level three. Um, this really starting to talk about things like multi-device FIDO keys. And I think that that sounds fantastic. That's a, I think it's heading in the right direction. And we're, we're of course, going to be uh, very much behind that. 
However, there are still challenges today um, and our customers are really demanding, um, you know, solutions to those challenges so that we can really help them um, get away from passwords now and, and not have to wait, uh, you know, a few years until we're able to completely solve for that with the FIDO protocol itself. Um, so with this kind of hybrid approach, we're really calling it FIDO Plus. And, and like I mentioned before, that's really taking all of the great things that FIDO provides us um, and adding on to that some of the other capabilities in and around the identity ecosystem. Um, so one of those key areas is really on the identity proofing side. Um, so uh, a core component of, of the Identity X platform um, is the what we call onboarding or identity proofing. And really what that's about is it's a document centric identity proofing solution that allows our customers to um, you know, capture an identity document. So whether that's a, a driver's license or a passport, we support, I think, over 7,000 different uh, government issued documents now. Um, so we take that document, we're able to process that, extract all of the data from the document, make sure that the document is legitimate, make sure it has not been tampered with. Um, of course, we also going back, you know, to our, our 20 year history in biometrics, we were able to, to develop some really specialized facial algorithms to match a selfie versus the image that we can extract from those documents. If you think about it, even on the, the latest documents today, the, if you get a brand new driver's license, the image on that document is still gonna be very small um, in relation to the, the kind of quality selfie that you're able to take with a smartphone these days. Um, so it takes a really specialized algorithm to really be able to get a good biometric match between a selfie and the smaller, lower resolution, often black and white, sometimes even have kind of a logo over the face, takes a really specialized algorithm to do that well. Um, so our, our biometric scientists have been able to, to really fine tune our facial algorithm uh, to really work well with those, what we call kind of the, the selfie to document match. Um, then of course we take all of that information that we capture from the document and the selfie and we run it through an evaluation process. So um, in our case, it's a very configurable process that we're able to really work with our customers to define specific rules on what is it that we actually want to evaluate with the, with the information that we're capturing and extracting from these documents. Um, in some cases, we may you know, take the data, derive some, some information from that, for instance, and make sure not only is the document valid and, and not expired, we may also reach out to a third party and validate that the document is um, you know, still valid, meaning it has not been um, revoked or something like that, right? So we can, we can reach out to systems that interact with, for instance, the DMV or maybe the, the country's national ID system. Um, we also have some, some built-in kind of biometric capability features. So for instance, we have a biometric watch list that we can define in, within the system so the idea there is as an organization that's using our platform um, has a list of known fraudsters or, or as people uh, are found to be committing fraud, we can load their face into our biometric watch list. And then every time a new identity comes through the system, we can take that selfie and match it against that gallery in the watch list and make sure that the same uh, individual, the same attacker is not running their face through the system multiple times. Um, of course, we're also running a lot of, you know, really high-tech biometric liveness algorithms on the images itself as well. And that's really to make sure that someone, again, can't try and spoof the system by, by holding up a, you know, a picture that they found on Facebook uh, or taking a video of someone and trying to pass that off as, um, as you know, their face as they go through the system. Um, so that's the, the identity proofing um, capability. And again, it's really all built into the same Identity X platform. So what that allows us to do is take someone through the identity proofing, establish their identity at the same time. That's the ideal time really to be able to create and, and register these, these FIDO authenticators. Um, so, you know, as, as we all know, right, an authentication process is really only as good as who that identity is to begin with. If you can establish the identity to begin with, then that really gives you a strong place to, to springboard off of and, and 
create that identity, create that digital identity and be able to provide strong authentication going forward. Um, so in addition to kind of the, the identity registration, uh, which of course is most commonly used during the kind of the, the onboarding or account registration process, we're seeing a lot of customers really leverage this, uh, you know, with some other kind of unique use cases where the same kind of a, a document centric process can be used um, again to, to provide that, that strong identity proofing, but maybe not necessarily for account registration. So a, a couple examples of this, um, if a user maybe gets locked out of their phone, um, you know, with, with FIDO, since it's a device-based authentication, um, if I lose my device, sometimes that can be tricky to, to get a new device registered. A lot of cases, you know, we can fall back on some other stronger authentication capabilities, maybe one-time passwords or some other things that, that again, we all are, are kind of trying to get away from. Um, in some cases, some customers may even have to fall back to using usernames and passwords in some cases to establish that identity again, so that we can then register their FIDO authenticators in a new device. Um, so a lot of our customers are really seeing the, the uh, identity proofing capability as a much, much stronger way to be able to allow a user to kind of reestablish their identity. Um, so there's several other kind of use cases in and around that same uh, vein that, that our customers are using, uh, again, to springboard and, and springboard off of and use that, that uh, identity proofing capability almost as another authentication factor. Um, so in some cases, you know, even though we may have some, some FIDO authenticators established on a device, if I'm registering for a brand new service or something like that, some of our customers are looking at using this to, to provide a, an even stronger um, authentication factor to really make sure and, and be certain that this is the person who they claim to be. So just kind of wrapping up a little bit, I um, wanted to just talk a little bit about some of the advantages that, that we see with a, a FIDO certified solution, of course. Um, you know, Dan ha has offered FIDO-based solutions for a long, long time. Um, and, and to this day, with, with some new prospects, we still get questions on, well, why can't we just use Touch ID or Face ID, All right? We're already using that. A and I, I think to the credit of, of FIDO and, and, and how people have implemented the FIDO protocols, that's actually a good thing that a lot of customers don't really realize there's much of a difference that tells me that the user experience is, is still very, very good. If they can't really tell the difference between just using Touch ID and using a, a, a strong FIDO-based authentication. Um, but being able to, to leverage the, the strong peer-reviewed, you know, tried and true protocols developed by FIDO um, over and above just the things that are built into to the authenticators or to the devices themselves really gives you a much, much stronger security posture. Um, you know, we also talk about how we're, we're future-proofing um, your, your authentication and your identity solutions. Um, a lot of customers may kind of have in-house developed, um, you know, applications or solutions where they're leveraging things like Touch ID and Face ID themselves. Of course, that puts a much bigger burden on their development teams to be able to maintain and, and uh, ensure that all of those systems are secure. Um, so leveraging a, a FIDO-based solution and a, a platform like Dayon really allows them to um, kind of offload that, if you will. Um, let us handle the, the, the difficult you know, biometrics and, and security capabilities with regards to authentication and identity uh, proofing um, and allow them to really focus on their core business. Of course, that also, we believe, uh, you know, saves you a lot of time and money in the process um, and also ensures that your systems are going to be scalable. Uh, we have customers that are that are operating in the thousands of transactions per second. Um, so being able to, to leverage that same platform that uh, is constantly being innovate, innovated on um, and improved upon is just a, another way that that allows us to um, enable our customers to completely 
um, manage our systems and, and focus on their core technology while offloading the, the difficult authentication and identity capabilities. So that's really it. Hopefully that, that gave you a little bit of background on uh, Dayon's FIDO solutions and really what we like to call FIDO Plus. Um, if you would like more information, feel free to reach out. We'd, we'd be happy to, to give you a, a demo of the solution. Um, and we'd be happy to talk to you about uh, how we can help you um, achieve a FIDO Plus solution. Thank you.